Hello, Kipsters. Today is Tuesday, March 9th. We are going to be continuing learning about the woodwind instrument family. And today we have a special group of instruments we're learning about. And hopefully we get through all four of them. That is my goal and objective today is to get through all four of these instruments we're learning about. But these particular instruments are called the double reed instruments. Okay, so they are in the woodwind family. They are woodwind instruments, but one particular thing about them that's special is that they're called the double reed instruments. And why they're called that? Well, a lot of, most woodwind instruments have what is called a reed on it, R-E-E-D, a reed. Not like read a book, but reed, like R-E-E-D. And we're going to watch a video about how reeds are made. But they're called double reed because these instruments, particularly the the, the reed goes into the mouthpiece and these instruments particularly are made of two reeds put together as one. So if we're learning about an instrument like the clarinet or the saxophone, those instruments only have one reed. Okay. Whereas these instruments that we're about to learn about are called double reeds. So I put them all together in one day so that we can learn about them all at the same time. Okay. So um, we're going to move on to the first instrument of the double reed family and it is called the oboe. Okay. The oboe is the principal instrument of the oboe family, which means there's, as I was talking about yesterday, there are a lot of different um, cousins or relatives of instruments in the woodwind family. And so there are multiple types of oboes and the oboe itself is the top one, the most popular one. Okay. Oboes are usually made of wood with metal keys, a cone shaped bore and a flared bell to play the oboe you blow into a double reed. So if you look at the top there, you see that little piece sticking out at the top. That is the double reed. And if you look very closely, which we can't really see, maybe I can zoom in a little bit here. It's two, it's basically two pieces of tiny wood put together that makes a little hole at the top. And these are very hard instruments to play. I would never suggest a, uh, a beginner to play this instrument, but um, a lot of people do try it out just so they don't have to relearn how to play their instrument again. So. If you ever had an interest in playing the oboe, I believe uh, my mom was her first instrument she tried was the oboe and it was too hard for her. So she chose something else. But it's a very beautiful instrument when it's played correctly. Here's a video of the oboe being played. You can either watch me on my YouTube video or you can watch on your own Nearpod, which you should be following along with.
awesome, good. So again, that instrument, very beautiful if you know how to play it right, but if you don't know how to play that instrument right, very easily can sound like a wounded duck. So if you ever wanted to make a wounded duck sound, try out the oboe. Okay, moving on to the next instrument in the double reed category. Okay, so we talked about how there are cousin instruments or, rel or related instruments to the oboe. This is one of them. This instrument is called the English horn. Okay, and um, it is a double reeded woodwind instrument in the oboe family. It is approximately one and a half times the length of an oboe. So um, an oboe, I would say maybe this tall, you know, one and a half, so double and then a half, um, or maybe not, not exactly double as long, but it is much bigger. So you have to kind of like, it, the oboe will never pass like your chest if you're an adult person, but if you're an English horn player, it'll probably be more towards your lap is where the English horn would be sitting. So it is much longer. Um, it does have a deeper sound, um, and it, it is probably a little bit cha more challenging to play. Not as popular as the oboe, but you will see it in a lot of bands as, um, and specific songs. So um, just to give you a little example here, when people write music, um, they don't always include all the instruments. So, you know, say I'm composing a piece for band. I don't have to write an English horn piece, okay? And it's not very easy to to come across an English horn even. So you're more likely gonna see your English horn parts in like college music and stuff. But in high school and middle school, you're not really gonna play the English horn as an instrument of choice. But you could if you really wanted to. The oboe is a soprano instrument of the oboe family. The English horn is generally regarded as the tenor member of the family. So if you know your singing parts well, soprano is the highest girl singer, the highest female voice, and tenor is the highest male voice. Okay, so females naturally have a, a capability of singing higher than males. So you can just assume from this that the tenor is going to be a more dark sound, okay? Whereas the oboe is gonna be high as you heard in the last video, okay? Moving on to this video we have here. This is a video basically showing you the difference between oboe and English horn and their sounds. Hello everyone. I'm the RPO principal oboe, Eric Baer. Hi, and I'm Anna Stoltenpol, the RPO's second oboe player in English horn. We're going to explain both the similarities and differences between the oboe and English horn. Here we have the oboe. The oboe comes in three pieces. The bell, the middle joint, and the top joint. On top of that sits an oboe reed. Just like the oboe, the English horn also comes in three different pieces. The bell, middle joint, top joint, and I have a reed as well, but I also have a vocal. The vocal allows me to play the English horn in a normal position. Otherwise, I'd have to play like this, which is awkward. <laughs> the oboe's reed is a little bit smaller, but we both have the same struggles with making reeds in that we have to bring cane over, import cane from France where they have the good wine. And that cane is then used in, in the process of gouging and splitting and pre-gouging. And when you get a perfect reed, it's incredibly liberating and wonderful to play. The oboe and English horn are members of the same family. We're siblings, but we also have other members in our family too. The oboe de Moor and the bass oboe. And the oboe is traditionally seen as a leader of the woodwind section. So when the concert master walks onto stage, he or she will look at the oboe player and I will play the tuning aid. The reason the oboe plays a tuning A is because our sound is quite a penetrating sound, and so everybody can hear it. So unlike the oboe, the English horn is not a concert pitch instrument. When I finger a note, take an A for example, it doesn't actually sound an A, it sounds a concert D. So the English horn is pitched a fifth lower than the oboe. Despite their differences, the oboe and the English horn still make beautiful music together. Eric and I will now be playing a duet by Alec Wilder for oboe and English horn.
Okay. If you're following along in the Nearpod, which you should be, we're moving on from the next video. And we should be on the slide that said, Wood wins the bassoon. Sorry if I haven't been um, appropriately telling you when to move on next, but we are currently on the slide that says the bassoon. Okay. And remember, these instruments that I'm talking to you about today are all similar, not because of they're in the same family, but because they all use a double reed. OK, and that is the one reason I categorize them all together. Other than that, this instrument does not have any relation to the oboe. This is called the bassoon. The bassoon is a woodwind instrument in the double reed family with a warm, dark, reedy sound that is similar to that of a male baritone voice. OK, so this instrument is more likely more close related to a if we were comparing it to brass, which you guys should know all about brass or at least a little bit about brass. This would be more like the trombone of the woodwind family, whereas the oboe would be more like the trumpet or the cornet. OK, so this is one of the lower instruments. OK, and I'm going to in the next instrument we're going to learn is even lower than that. But in this video, I believe we're going to watch how reeds are made. OK, so this video is going to be a little bit longer. But when I was talking about double reeds, and if you look here on my YouTube video right now, you'll see a great picture of a double reed and why it's called a double reed. You see that little hole right there at the tip of the mouthpiece? That's because there's two wooden pieces stuck on top of each other, which then leaves a small little hole that you can blow the air into, and then it goes ultimately through the entire instrument. So we're going to watch this video about how these double reeds, all, what I've been talking about, how these double reeds are made. To play most woodwind instruments, the musician blows air through a reed made of cane. The reed vibrates to create sound, just like the vocal cords in our throat. A bassoon reed is comprised of two thin blades of cane rather than one, so it's called a double reed. A bassoon reed has twin blades at the top that vibrate to produce sound and a tube at the bottom that fits onto the bassoon's lead pipe. The reed maker begins with a stalk of cane that's almost an inch in diameter. With a single strike of a cylindrical X-shaped blade, he splits it into four equal strips. Then uses a guillotine to cut each strip to a length of four and three quarter inches. After soaking a strip in water for about eight hours to soften the fibers, he laterally slices off about half the cane. Then, he places it in a precision goucher and thins it to approximately 0.05 inches, give or take a fraction of an inch. He verifies the thickness with a precision measuring tool called a dial indicator. clamps the cane in a reed-shaped template and trims away the excess. This gives the cane a distinct contour. He removes the outer layer of rigid bark and thins out the middle, which will become the dual blades of the reed. Next, he cuts a pattern that will enable the reed to vibrate at the frequencies required to produce the bassoon's full range of 44 notes. Then he scores both ends of the cane to make them flexible enough to be bent into a half circle. He folds the cane in half and ties it with a piece of brass wire. The fold will form the double blades at the top of the reed. The opposite ends, once bent into mating half circles, will form the tube at the bottom. Keeping the cane wet, he heats a cylindrical forming mandrel over the flame of an oil burning lamp. Then he wraps the tube end tightly with twine. The heat softens the cane's fibers, holding them under pressure from the tightly wound twine to the shape of the mandrel. This forms the two adjoining half circles into a perfectly round tube. After a few seconds, he removes the forming mandrel and unwraps the twine. He inserts a holding mandrel of the same diameter and wraps it with a rubber band. 
He puts the reed aside to dry for about a week. This sets the shape permanently. When he unwraps and unfolds the reed, he sands the edges of the two adjoining half circles so that they meet perfectly. Then he refolds the reed, securing it with three wires spaced at specific intervals. The distance between the wires in concert with the curved shape of the cane finalizes the contour of the reed, which determines how it vibrates. Once the wires are correctly positioned, he wraps the tube end of the reed with strong synthetic string. This will contain the tube dimensions when the reed is re-soaked. He coats the string with glue to further strengthen the tube. Once the glue dries, he reams the inside of the tube to fit perfectly into the bassoon's lead pipe. He places a ruler against the first wire and makes a mark of just over an inch out toward the folded tip. Then he clips off the folded tip. The reed now has double blades that vibrate when the musician blows air through them. Because cane is a plant, not a synthetic material, there are slight natural variations from reed to reed. So bassoonists make the last minor adjustments themselves, with profilers and other tools, until their reed vibrates beautifully. So as you can see in that video, very intricate process that it takes to make a, a, a double reed. Okay, and I remember in college, a lot of my friends that played the oboe or that played the bassoon, they had to make their own reeds. And it was a very challenging process because you saw how like precise and like how small those cuts were sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a, this is why the double reed instruments are very challenging because um, it takes a lot of effort to, to be good at that. And so our last instrument that we're gonna be learning about today is called the contra bassoon, okay? Now the contra bassoon or the double bassoon is just a, is a larger version of the bassoon sounding an octave lower. So that means that if I were singing one note up here, la, that same note that I would play on the bassoon, la, would sound like this on the contra bassoon, la, okay, la. So it, it, it basically just means that this instrument Every note it plays has the ability to play one step lower than the bassoon or one octave lower than the bassoon. So if I were to compare this instrument, I would say this is more like the tuba of the woodwind family, okay? This is the lowest, one of the lowest instruments in the woodwind family. I'm gonna show you a video of this and then we're gonna do one final slide and that is going to be that. Here's a video of the contra bassoon being played by the same guy three different ways. And normally in most band settings, you wouldn't have three contra bassoons because sometimes you can hear his little grumbly and rumbly there. But that was a very nice rendition of the song America the Beautiful, if you could recognize that. So our last slide here, guys, I have a poll for you. I just want you to answer which double reed instrument do you think you would choose to play? OK, we have the English horn. Remember, it's a longer version of the oboe, a little bit more lower sounding, the tenor version of the oboe family. We have the oboe 
basically the principle of, of all the double reed instruments, the most recognizable, I would say, um, in terms of sound. Um, then we have the bassoon, which we just saw was the instrument that had the cool, the, the, the double reed video and uh, the, the, the trombone of the woodwind family. And then the contra bassoon, which we just saw a video of, um, which is probably the hardest of these instruments to play. Go ahead and pick which one you would pick. I would pick the oboe probably because I like the higher instruments and that would be what I would choose. My mom also wanted to play oboe, but she chose another instrument, which we'll talk about that instrument tomorrow. If you got that far, awesome job. Thank you for following along this far in the video. As always, Mr. Isaac has three things for you. You are kind, you are smart, you are important. Tune in tomorrow to see a cool video of Mr. Isaac playing an instrument. I've never shown that many people or this many people this video before. So I'm just going to show you a small bit of it. But tune in tomorrow and you will get to see that in action. As always, have a great weekend. Have a good day. And I will see you guys when I see you.